taunt to elicit emotional response. Block the right and the left. Dislocate the jaw. Parry and injure right bicep. Dodge the overhead. Destroy right wrist. Block Y strikes. Repost. In summary, torn bicep. Disable wrist, fracture jaw, gash across the face, excessive bleeding. Physical recovery. Uh, ne never, because uh, she's probably dead. <laughs> is not the guy <laughs> yeah I know normally the guy who usually does this you know purple guy he's not here at the moment he said he has some business to take care of so I will be your host for today's video I am too Hey. What the hell is core is a blade wielding, wrist slashing, face cutting, people stabbing, empty the compartments of your pantaloons and discard of your footwear as well. Simulator, that despite sounding like a typical day for an emo teen in England, is a HEMA combat simulator. And one of the most promising games for the reasons I'll go into in this video. Now, what is HEMA, you ask? Well, it's what you can say to your enemy as well as your partner. Hey, eat my ass. Well, it also means historical European martial art. Basically, a bunch of dudes swing their sticks in each other's faces. Hellish Court is developed and self-published by Kubolt Studio, a small Polish studio that specializes in video game animation. The studio is led by Jakub Kisil, an experienced animator who worked on big AAA titles such as Bulletstorm, Gears of War, and Gears of War Judgment. Most notably, Jakub also animated Geralt from The Witcher 3. Now the real question is, how did they do the sex scenes in that game? <laughs> did the actors grind up against each other in mocap suits? Or did they just try hump the air? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, baby. I wish I could. Released onto early access on February 16th, 2021. The game has remained there ever since. Though, as opposed to Exanima, where the devs go into a coma after every update, Hellish Court has received very frequent content updates throughout the year. The latest notable one being on the 7th of July, where they added new more content was as barren as your Tinder DM upon the game's release, but it has had some stuff added to it since then, so the game is not as empty anymore. The same thing can be said for your bed at night, however. So what's the story about? Well, we have our main character, Jacek, who has a friend called Tarnavsky, who asks for Jacek's help in acquiring some money and I'm bored. Honestly, I couldn't give much of a damn about a story. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kobold, it's not your fault, okay? is the fault of the guy who made the gameplay. It's not that the story is bad or anything, it's just that it's like similar to porn. Nobody is there to listen to stepsis complain about her boyfriend, okay? The story is like a nice little bow that neatly ties everything together. But we all know the real package here is in the gameplay. I do not approve of this friendship. But please don't get me wrong, what little story content available here is great. The cutscenes are fantastically animated and well voice acted. Yeah, at least I think they are. Because the characters speak in a language that sounds like Russian after two vodka bottles and a lobotomy. You're just a guy that goes around stabbing people for some reason involving money is honestly all the reasons that I need to commit heinous acts of violence. Well, not that I need any to begin with. Hey, guys. What? If it's another sex joke, I swear no, to... You gotta see this, come on. Fine. Guys, wait a second, okay? I'm gonna go check it out. Can I come too? Hey, hey, what's that? No, not another Death Space 3 situation. What's that? I'll deliver. So, you know, consider Patreon, guys. Hey, Green, can you please call in Brad? See where he is, right? Uh, hmm? He's right there. 
Oh no, you don't. Okay, <laughs> let's just pretend that red guy didn't just bite a hole through blue guy's leg. <laughs> God damn. The real meat of the game lies in fight mode. This is where you will be spending most of your time in the game. Aside from the endless survival and practice mode, where you can put on protective gear and simulate fighting in a dojo, sparing you from having to interact with smelly strangers. You also have your classical arcade mode, where each of the 12 playable characters is given a small bit of lore and a reason for why they are fighting in the first place. The number of opponents is of your choosing, and once you've defeated them all, you fight this guy, who calls you the Rizzler every time you defeat him. This is quite a tough boss battle because he has a suit of armor, which essentially turns him into a murderous Jesus. You'll have to wear him down strike by strike until he's too exhausted and injured to fight back. The boss fight utilizes the stamina and damage system which I'll talk more about in the next section of the video. Now it wouldn't be a fighting game without a roster full of colorful characters, all of whom are very well designed, each with their unique appearance, fighting stance and flourishes in animations that really set them apart from one another. Featuring guy with a curved sword, another guy with a curved sword, Jason Momoa with a curved sword, Mr. Beast, whoever kills me wins a million dollars, Felicity Jones after a car crash, yeah! and black guy with a curved sword. Yeah, as you can tell, curved swords were the shit back then, as almost all of these characters carry one. And before you ask, sorry, I can't tell the difference between a carabella and a killage from the slight, almost imperceptible difference in the curvature of the blade, okay? And this brings us to one of the criticisms I have for this game, which is the lack of weapon variety. I know, I know, uh, the game's supposed to be historically accurate. Unlike Assassin's Creed Shadows, a game as historically accurate as Narnia. <laughs> Despite what Ubisoft is trying to gaslight people into thinking it's not. Watch my video here. Maybe it's because I'm a filthy casual, but I can't really tell the difference between these weapons and their movesets. Hema enthusiasts are going to have a field day with this game, figuring out all the intricate differences between these weapons and how to best utilize them to their advantage. But casual gamers like myself might find a weapon selection a bit underwhelming. I mean, realistically, there's only so much you can do with a sword, but I'd like to see more flashy movements like what this guy can do. Cobalt, if you're listening, not that these are my favorite medieval weapons or anything, but maybe add a guy with a maze or a flail. <laughs> the overabundance of curved swords also means that I naturally gravitate towards the more unique options, like the long sword because of its unique moveset, which brings us to the next section. It's what you're here for. Now, I don't do HEMA, but I swear to god this game just beams HEMA knowledge straight into my brain. Where I live, we just do the good old grab and stab. Just imagine a Wolfenstein meme and you have an idea of what a trip to the office is like. Guns are pretty much non-existent, but melee weapons are abundant. And by that, I mean they are literally everywhere. It's like an RPG game up in this bitch. Just hit up one of these wandering merchants and they'll hook you up with a gap. Look at that. My guy's got a whole armory in there. They can even upgrade your weapons by sharpening them. All of this to say is that despite everyone being decked out in enough gear to make gangs of New York look like a romantic comedy, people here have no knowledge of HEMA. So after diving headfirst into Hellish Court, I feel like I have a bigger chance of survival than your average pedestrian here. Now this is not to say that I know HEMA or how to actually fight with a sword. It just means that the gameplay is so good, so refined so well animated, so deep inside, that the game feels like a video tutorial on how to sword fight. Like any good fighting game, Hellish Court is relatively easy to learn. When we talk about this game, we're talking extreme precision here. You know in Olympic fencing, where it's so fast that neither the athletes nor the judges know who won and who lost? <laughs> yeah? Get that out of your head. Do it!
Get it out, you fuck! This is a game of inches. One cut and you're dead. Except this is not exactly the case because you can turn on the health bar in the options menu. So, one precise cut and you're dead. Now, you have four attacks. A high left cut, a high right cut, a low left cut, and a low right cut. That's it. Four buttons for four directions of attack. There's also a grapple that seems to work like an insta-kill, but I have yet to make it work. And I refuse to read the thoroughly to read the thoroughly and I refuse to read the thoroughly written instructions that contain detailed explanation of every single mechanics in this game. Okay? Reading is for betas. <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> Green guy? <laughs> Green guy catching strays, but true though. Your four attacks can be combined with the movement keys to create different attacks. For example, blocking is automatic, so your job is to manage distance, time your attacks, and pretend to look like you know what you're doing. You with me so far? Attacks can also be chained together to perform simple combos whose commands are clearly laid out for you when you pause the game in the middle of the fight, hoping your character still has arms after you're done reading the instructions. These combos are nothing too crazy. Your characters won't wave dash like in Tekken or do a Garo 360 pirouette or anything fancy for that matter. But the things they can do can lead to some of the most glorious non-scripted gameplay ever. And this is where the true genius lies, okay? There are two different approaches to video game combat design. The first approach is the cinematic approach, made popular by the Batman Arkham series, where the goal is more about making you feel like a good player. You know how in the Batman games and Ghost of Tsushima, combat animations are entirely contextual, which means attacks are scripted to always look good and make sense. Combat always plays out like a movie fight scene because enemies are programmed to react a certain way when you press the attack or the block buttons. This means that no matter how bad they play, players always feel like they are doing something right. In contrast, Hellish Core takes the second approach, the here's a sword, go f up approach, where the only context you need is to stick a phallic object into the other guy's body. And contrary to what one might think, the lack of any contextualization means players are free to go wild and do whatever they want, which leads to even more insane moments. That makes no sense most of the time. But when they do, oh lord are you in for an epic treat. Another game that does physics-based combat really well is Exanima, which has the same approach to combat design, but the implementation is a million times wackier. You can watch my review here. Bushido Blade often comes up in discussions surrounding Hellish Court, which is fair, but the similarity in concept is where the comparison ends. Because you know, Bushido Blade was made in 1997. Thanks to today's advancements in technology, Hellish Court's mechanics are infinitely more complex and rewarding to learn. The advanced physics system here means that weapons can physically clash and get caught up in each other mid-swing, creating a tangibility that makes combat feel like actual fighting, instead of two plastic mannequins trying to have human sex. Ooh, can I watch? You don't even have eyes. I am an omnipotent consciousness. I do not require eyes to observe. I do not require a brain to process. I am transcendent. I am all-knowing. I am all-seeing. There is no... Speaking of sex, your character is the very definition of a two-pump jump. This isn't Tekken or Killer Instinct where the player is expected to be on as much methamphetamine as the character. You can do at most six consecutive thrusts before your peanut-sized lungs just explode. And the recovery time scales with how ran through you are. So is a valid strategy for characters like Marie to wear you down with fast but weak strokes before coming fast and finishing you off. Yeah and are going to be merged into one for this video because they complement each other so well. Visceral is the word I would use to describe both the audio and visual of Hellish Court. When I first came into this game, I was expecting it to be some goofy ass sword fighting game with funny characters and good mechanics. What I got instead was Eichmophobia, the fear of sharp objects. 
And while the game can indeed be goofy at times, I do feel like the devs went through more than a lot of effort to make sure the combat looks and sounds lethal. What the hell is going on out there? Look, Red, we don't have to do this. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> Mm. I wish we had a budget to show that fight. <laughs> so, you know, subscribe or support the channel on the Patreon. Everything from the... The scarily realistic death animation, all the way to the blood jets that shoot out of your character's jugular when they get hit, are designed to invoke a sense of hyper-realism that makes combat so visceral. All of this in combination with the handheld style camera makes it feel like you're actually there. An onlooker watching two deranged hobos fighting to the death for the last park bench. Another thing that also deserves glowing praises is the excellent music. You know, it's just excellent. It's so easy for game developers, especially in games with a medieval aesthetic, to just half-heartedly slap some generic copyright-free music into their game and call it a day. I know that making a game is hard, which is why I think Kubold deserves a lot of praise for paying so much attention to the game's music. I'm not a trained musician by any means, Strong three. but from what I've heard, shit's fire. From what I can tell, the devs chose to forgo many of the fantasy motifs that tend to make music sound epic, like chanting or triumphant horns, and instead went for traditional musical instruments. The result is a very authentic and sometimes somber soundtrack that perfectly encapsulates what I think medieval Europe sounded like. Now, there is but one question remains. What's in the suitcase? <laughs> well, we might never know maybe in the next video. So, should you buy Hellish Court? Well, I say yes, with some caveats. If you're a history buff, a Hema fan, or just wondering what it feels like to stab a woman, you're gonna fall in love with this game. Or better yet, get a group of friends and take turns stabbing each other. <laughs> you know, great fun. Whoever wins gets to play the game. Another year of cooking and I guarantee we'll have another cult classic on our hands. <laughs> Hey, it's Purple Guy! Hey, I just ordered new tripod. They didn't have it in the shop, so they're shipping it here. We uh, might have a problem. Yeah, y you might want to check it out. <laughs> Thank you to all of my patrons for funding this video and a special shout out to Osayuris in the Lobotomized tier. <laughs> Guys, it is because of your help that I'm able to fund these new equipments. Old and busted. New hotness. So, watch my other videos around here. Subscribe and stay tuned to witness my gradual descent into insanity. <laughs> if you don't, I'll help me.